Hidden in the valleys of central Pennsylvania's coal region lies Pottsville, a town known for Yingling, which is America's oldest brewery, for famous novelist John O'Hara, and the 1925 NFL champion Pottsville Maroons football team, a team football legend Red Grange described as having the most ferocious and respected players he ever faced. The title was stripped from the team and the town, inspiring 92-year-old Nick Barbetta to spend the last 82 years of his life trying to get the championship back to Pottsville. Yeah, there's something that was stolen from us. Actually, it was one that was taken right out of due to illegal football game. I wrote to all of the owners of the NFL, every one. You know that I got some letters back favoring Pottsville. Not too many of them, though, but not enough to bear. They said Pottsville was really robbed. You know, but if they're afraid they're going to, if I say something, they're going to expose them. the NFL will penalize them somehow, you know, which they can't. But they're afraid. In 63 with the NFL, and they voted 30 to 32 to turn it down. And then Rendell snuck his nose in it and he called me and he said, How about if I offer him some money? I said, no way. So I'm going to offer him $10,000 to give us the title. I said, you don't buy the championship. I said, you earned it. But I said, drop that. He never went through it. <laughs> you know, I told Rendell over the phone. The Maroons tradition is ingrained in the Pottsville area high school football team, which is led by head coach Kevin Keating. Uh, I think every part of the country uh, tries to pass on uh, their football heritage uh, to their, their their young players, and uh, here in the co-region and in Pottsville, it's it's you start with the Maroons. The first time I got like sensitive and conscious of the Maroons was uh, as an eighth grader. I attended a banquet here at the Nico Island Hotel. It was the late 60s, 67 or 68, and uh, uh, the Four Horsemen. Uh, one of the Four Horsemen, the original Four Horsemen. Uh, can't recall who it was right now. Uh, well, one of them showed up to speak at a banquet I attended, and uh, somebody in the crowd asked him about the Maroons. And uh, he mentioned, he talked about the game at a shy park uh, that the Maroons played against the Four Horsemen of Notre Dame, and it was a game that eventually uh, cost them their, their their official title anyway. We still believe they're, they're we still recognize them here in Pasco as the uh, 1925 NFL champions because they won it on the field. But that was the game that, with the Four Horsemen of Notre Dame, and it really was kind of like the, the first uh, college all-star football game between the NFL champion and the uh, college all-stars at that time. But it gave credence to the to pro football for the first time, because Notre Dame at that time was really thought to be the, the creme de la creme of, of football, the best football in the country, uh, including pro football. And when the Maroons went down to Shy Park and beat them down there 9-7, uh, it really kind of brought pro football, I think, uh, to the forefront uh, in, uh, in American society. Yeah, the kids embrace the uh, heritage uh, that the Maroons uh, have given us here. Because, and it's funny because the young kids that come through and they're freshmen, they'll walk by, stop at their bulletin board and take a pause at that old black and white photo and they'll ask me or they'll ask an assistant coach, you know, what, what, what's, what's, what's the picture about? We always tell them, read it, just read about it. Read the, read the caption underneath and uh, learn about them. And then by the time they're seniors and juniors, uh, they're, they're using it as a rallying cry on Friday nights as we go out in the field. 1925 NFL champions! Maroons! Let's go, man, go to work! Well, the ring means more to me than anything because it was the champ uh, best thing I have to remember the championship of, of, of Postal winning it fairly. So I'll never part with it. Barbetta might have his ring, but he has also done several things for the community to keep the memory alive. First of all, the uh, historical marker on Center Street, uh, uh, the, the, the historical society out there on, on the street on the pavement there, is the Pennsylvania historical marker marker for the room. It took me two years to get that because they wanted to word it they, the way they wanted to word it. So then I goes up in New York to the NFL headquarters one day, Sox Holden and I. We were going to see Roselle. He was supposed to be there. Here he's out of town. That happened a couple of times on. 
So while I was there, I saw this, this thing here, this here, the Gladiator Award. I saw that behind the, his desk on, a, on the shelf, uh, the uh, executive director of this was. He said, you know what? He said, that's the Gladiator Award. I said, who gets that? He said, the t fellow, the player of the year in the, in the NFL gets it. Uh, for what he did for the team and for the town and everything else, you know. I said, you know what, that belongs to Pottsville. Oh, we don't give it to a town, he said. I said, well, they're making an award for the city of Pottsville to get this. The only town in the country that ever received that. The only town that ever received it. This is the thing we put up in the, over in Minersville, in the bowl where they played. Mm -hmm. And said, uh, on this field, the early history was made in the National Football League. The NFL Pottsville Maroons played the greatest NFL teams in the country from 1925 to 1928. On December 6, 1925, they played the Chicago Cardinals a championship, winning 21-7. They lost the NFL title due to a territorial dispute in playing the Notre Dame Four Horsemen team in Side Park, Philadelphia, December 12, 1925. I got the people in. <laughs> In Arizona, now, all riled up out there. You have a curse on them. The oldest curse in, in sports all, all together, from 1925 until now, we're still fighting about this, playing with the, with the, see, Bill Bidwell of the Cardinals out there now is the owner. He's, he's a, he's the tough nut in this case. I got them out there believing so bad that they're writing to me and calling me and everything out there to drop this. I said, well, you're having trouble, ain't you? I said, well, that's through the curse. I said, coming close to winning a game and losing it. And now I got the big quarterback to hire from Southern Cal, I think he was. Now he's crippled. He can't play for the year. Uh, so the, the curse is working. <laughs> the Bambino curse was only... 80 years. This is 82 now. <laughs>